This is A Better Day, A Better Life presents Maya, a treasure in our own time. I'm your host, Debbie Givens. Good morning. This show is about reaching a better life through raising awareness, improving our realities, by giving ourselves the opportunity to heal through educating, then putting into action uh, what we learn from topics and advice and solutions uh, that are presented here, which already exist for our use through our own history of greatness. Maya, a treasure in our own time. For those who don't know Maya, or know who Maya Angelou is or her significance to American culture, history, and literature, the existence of all these tributes and memorials, the TV shows and remembrances point to just how big a legend and figure Maya is for all of us. Today's show is being brought into existence to thank Maya and to offer a glimpse into her graceful, healing, courageous words that will live on. But more than words to read, they are words to live by, to heal by, to grow with. And that's why A Better Day, A Better Life is honoring Maya Angelou today. First, we're gonna hear Maya's own words in an excerpt from Brian Lanker's book, I Dreamed the World, Portraits of Black Women Who Changed America. Uh, the reading is gonna be done by uh, Stephen Lawrence, voiceover artist, and myself. And it's set to a slideshow of Maya Angelou in various stages of her life and career. Enjoy it. The larger society said that I belonged to an unwelcome tribe. My feeling was unwelcome to you, but my people don't say that, which is one of the reasons black women have survived and done better than that, thrive. But some of us don't, and we don't know who we've lost. It's impossible to say what we've lost when we cut off one group. We all diminish when one group is diminished. Can you imagine if this country were not so afflicted with racism? Can you imagine what it would be like if the vitality, humor, and resilience of the black American were infused throughout this country? I don't tell everything I know, but what I do tell is the truth. There's a world of difference between truth and facts. Facts can obscure the truth. You can tell so many facts that you fill the stage but haven't got one iota of the truth. Being humble doesn't mean one has to be a mat. In fact, just the opposite. What it means is, I will make myself so fine that I will be of use to you, make myself useful, do what I can do, and be an instrument of God. I do believe that anybody who can't be used is useless. I believe all the tools that have been given to me that I recognize, I have developed. They may have been given to me as crowbars, but I've turned them into levers. It is imperative that young people be told that we have come a long way, otherwise they are likely to become cynical. A cynical young person is almost the saddest sight to see because it means that he or she has gone from knowing nothing to believing nothing. Young people must not get to the point of saying, you mean to tell me we had Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Mar Mega Evans? You mean to tell me we had the Kennedys, we had Fannie Lou Hamer and Mary McLeod Bethune? You mean to tell me we had all these men and women and we have made no progress? Then what the hell? There is no progress to be made. It can't be made. So it must be simultaneous how far we have come and how far we have to go. Yes, Maya. One part of this reading that we left out, but it's so important, is one of Maya's major beliefs about herself is this quote regarding recognizing being blessed despite her circumstances. I believe the tools that have been given to me that I recognized, I have developed. They may have been given to me as crowbars and I've tried to turn them into levers. Do you believe we have the tools to elevate our own life? Most of us don't realize that. We all must recognize that we have the tools and we need to go deeper. Look deeper to find out just what they are and how we can use them to elevate ourselves and to do better and live better lives. That's what my show is about. Tools to find your gifts, discover your potential, and tips for having a better day and reaching those steps to getting to a better life. 
So it is with her life experience and wisdom that I present to you Maya Angelou. One thing of many that interested me about Maya and her third book, Mom and Me and Mom, is there was a point in her life while she was trying to raise her five-year-old son, Guy, where she, she was so despondent uh, over how she, I guess she felt she was being a delinquent mother, uh, she wasn't provi providing the best care and mothering for her son. She, she contemplated, or at least thought about, committing suicide, and she checked herself into a mental institution. She went to this place, she demanded to see a professional on the spot, she didn't have an appointment, and said what she had to say once she met with the professional, and she left. Having found the answer from within and speaking it out. This was amazing to me in a number of ways. First, being aware of her emotional and mental state. You know, having that awareness and saying, you know what, oh my goodness, stopping life, stopping everything, to focus on that state that she was in. She had the wherewithal to go looking for a solution, an outer solution. And she used her courage to go out there to a place to be heard. She used this courage to seek this outside counsel and then she reached deep within herself for consolation and for the solution to her problem, which of course was all in her mind to begin with. Having inner strength and resourcefulness are two qualities that we all have, but we have to exercise them in order for them to be useful, become useful at the right time. Yes, it's like a muscle. In the inner, the inner self, uh, we have the tools within and we have to use them and at some point, you, they become sharp enough for you to use them, for them to come into play at the right time. Around the passage in the book where she talks about this, now the book again is Me and uh, Mom and Me and Mom, where she talks about this to someone that she confides in, uh, usually it's her brother Bailey. Um, it was suggested to her that she sit down and write a gratitude list. And this is a practice that we all should do on a daily basis. Uh, now she says, um, after she did this exercise, and if you're reading the book, it's around page 136, 137, she wrote, when I reached the end of the page, I began to feel silly. I was alive and healthy. What on earth did I have to complain about? And she said, you know, after doing this exercise, uh, the ship of my life might or might not be sailing on calm seas. The challenging days of my existence might or might not be bright and promising. I maintain an attitude of gratitude still. If pessimism insists on occupying my thoughts, I remember there's always tomorrow. Today, I am blessed. And we should all feel that way. Um, sit down, look at what you're being going through in the day, but look at what you have. Look at what you have to be grateful for um, and know that you are blessed. Um, you know, life gives us a lot of trials and tribulations, but it's, it's for the purpose of growing. And, you know, the good and the bad that we go through is here to change us, and we have to remember that they're temporary. And so, Today I feel blessed. I feel blessed to be able to, to, to bring Maya Angelou's wisdom to you so that you can have a better day and live a better life. Uh, and before we go on for inspiration for the day, we're going to uh, now watch a video of Maya reading her own poem, And Still I Rise. Very inspiring. You know, I was, when I read it out loud to myself, you, you have to smile. It forces you to smile and feel proud. And that's what I like about many of Maya's work. So here we're gonna, we're gonna see and listen to Maya read, And Still I Rise. Everyone in the world has gone to bed one night or another with fear or pain or loss or disappointment. And yet each of us has awakened, arisen, uh, somehow made our ablution, seen other human beings and said, morning, how are you? 
find things in you. It's amazing. Wherever that abides in the human being, there is the nobleness of the human spirit. Despite it all, black and white, Asian, Spanish, Native American, pretty, plain, thin, fat, Vow to celibate, we rise. You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Just cause I walk as if I have oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like suns and like moons, with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my sassiness upset you? <laughs> Don't take it so hard just because I laugh. <laughs> As if I have gold mines digging in my own backyard. You can shoot me with your words. You can cut me with your lies. You can kill me with your hatefulness. But just like life, I rise. Does my sexiness offend you? Oh, does it come as a surprise that I dance? As if I have diamonds at the meeting of my thighs. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past rooted in pain, I rise. A black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak miraculously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the hope and the dream of the slave. And so, naturally, there I go rising. Wow, I'm so proud. I, I, I don't know, I feel better after having her and still I rise. There's so much to say and read about Maya Angelou. Uh, I want to just bring to you some tidbits, uh, some um, you know little pieces of information you might not know about Maya, uh, especially if you're just a casual observer of her. You know, you know you've heard of her, you maybe even uh, have seen her, but you're you, you know Maya the person, the, the writer, the author, the poet, um, entertainer, celebrity, screenwriter. Um, one of the most fascinating things about her actually is her name. Um, do you know where her name came from? Maya is not her given name. Angelo is not her given name. Um, her brother, Bailey, gave her the name Maya. She liked to call him my little Maya. And uh, her last name, Angelo, comes uh, from uh, one of her former husbands. Maya was married twice, and she married a man, a Greek man, named Anastasius Tosh Angelos. Uh, her last name is the feminine version of Angelos, Angelo. Uh, but her real name, her real full name is Marguerite Annie Johnson, believe it or not. Her mother was Vivian Baxter Johnson, uh, was married to her father uh, for some time. But um, when you read her book, I Know Why the Cage of Bird Sings, you'll see that the, uh, her parents were separated at that point and early on in her life. Another thing you might not know about uh, Maya Angelou is that she preferred or she actually liked to be called Dr. Angelou. Uh, and this is uh, kind of amusing to me because she never went to college to study, uh, but she's been awarded more than 30 honorary degrees. And since 1981, until her death, she had been a professor of American studies at Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. You could say she's an American study herself. I like what she says about herself. Maya says, I created myself. I taught myself so much. And that's inspiring. Really, that is. 
another uh, interesting fact about her is that her birth date is April 4th. And believe it or not, for birthdays, April 4th is a pretty popular uh, birth date uh, for many, many people to be born, including uh, my own father. Uh, it's also the same date that Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in 1968. And for years, she did not celebrate her birthday. Instead, Maya used to meet and talk with Coretta Scott King on April 4th until uh, uh, 2006, and that was the year that Coretta uh, Scott King died uh, in a fire uh, in her home. Maya's family was small. Maya uh, only had her son, uh, Guy Bailey Johnson, who is now 62 years old, but Maya got to be become a great-grandmother. Uh, her, obviously, her son had children, and uh, one of them had a child, so making her a great-grandmother. Um, she also owned a large house, an 18-room house, in uh, North uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, uh, as well as two townhouses in Harlem. One she rented out, and the other one, uh, when she was still with us, God bless her, uh, she used it as her urban getaway. Imagine that escaping from North Carolina to, to come to New York, to Harlem, uh, to, uh, to hang out and refresh. Um, Maya is, you have to admire that about her. You know, she's so unique. Um, who would think to get away from the South to, uh, to, to, to New York City as a getaway? And that's not bad for a woman who grew up being shuffled from St. Louis, Missouri, uh, to San Francisco, California, to Stamps, Arkansas, and back and forth. Um, another fascination that I have with Maya that I want to share with you is her height. Uh, she reached six feet tall. And for, you know, for me, that kind of matches the, the great height of her achievements and her works. Uh, as you saw in the slideshow, um, she, she didn't look as tall as, she's, as, as, as it seemed, but you know, she she had to rely on a cane uh, as she was unst unsteady on her feet, and that was after experiencing some health issues. I think after she turned 80, um, you know, she, she experienced some health issues that caused her to, to walk on a cane, and so you don't get the sense that she was of her greatness uh, from height, but um, certainly in, the, in some of the other earlier photos that you saw in the slideshow, um, uh, you know, you can see, especially the one where we were dancing with the with the African uh, drum. You know, you can see how tall she was, and she was magnificent. That's that's why I focus on her height because it, it kind of it reminds me of her magnificence. Another thing that you might not know about Maya is her favorite word. Her favorite word is joy. And you know, there's something about that word joy. You 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 can't say the word joy and and and, and use a disappointing or disapproving or sad tone to it. Joy itself brings joy. And, you know, it's one of those things that make you vibrate a, a little bit faster, a little bit higher. And so it actually brings you joy to say the word joy. So let's say that. Let's know that word together. Joy. Maya's favorite word is joy. I think that's great. I, I you know, just reading some of her works brings joy. Um, and it makes me proud. So, and it's one of the reasons I'm bringing Maya Angelou to you. And speaking of her writing, uh, you know that she liked to write on yellow legal pads and said that after all these years, a clean sheet of paper both scares her and thrills her. She said, I see a yellow pad and my knees get weak and I salivate. I know that sounds like coyness, but I have less coyness than modesty, and I have none of that. Uh, speaking of her works, um, she did a poem. Uh, Maya did a poem to Michael Jackson when he passed uh, that she called uh, We Had Him. And it was made into a film that she narrated. Um, Queen Latifah recited the poem at the Michael Jackson Public Memorial that they had at the Staples Center out in California on July 7, 2009. She also did a poem as a tribute to Nelson Mandela called His Day is Done. And of course, you, knew, you know about her bi autobiographies. There were four. Uh, the most famous, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, that was uh, made into a production, into a film. 
Uh, she wrote uh, that was published back in 1969. She also wrote All God's Children Need Traveling Shoes. Uh, that was published in 1986. A song flung up to heaven, she wrote, and was published in 2002. And then the latest one, uh, Mom and Me and Mom, which I mentioned before, that was published in 2013. And again, I highly recommend it. It's a fast read. She does cover some of the same time period as I know why the Caged Bird sings, um, but it comes with a different maturity uh, and, and insight to it. So I, I highly recommend reading that book. And speak, speaking of reading, uh, right now I'd like to present to you uh, her poem, Phenomenal Woman. She's, in this video that you're about to see, she's reading it herself. I, I know people like to read her poetry out loud and there's several events going on this, um, uh, this time of the year, uh, still honoring her and, um, and doing readings of her works. But there's nothing like hearing Maya read her own works. Um, I can hear her, her voice in my ear. So here, here, here she is uh, reading Phenomenal Woman. Many people wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. When I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say, it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman, phenomenally. I walk into a room just as cool as you please, and to a man the fellows stand, or fall down on their knees. Then they swarm around me, a hive of honeybees. I say, it's the fire in my eyes, the flash of my teeth, the swing in my waist, the joy in my feet. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say, it's in the arch of my back, the sun of my smile, the ride of my breasts, the grace of my style. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say, it's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palms of my hands, the need for my care. Because I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman, all you women and me. Yes, phenomenal woman she was. And one person, speaking of phenomenal woman, one person she was often associated with, Oprah Winfrey. They have been close for over 30 years. You'd be interested to know that they were on opposite sides of the political fence during the 2004 Democratic presidential campaign. Oprah, as you know, or you might remember, she campaigned for Barack Obama. And Maya, she did radio ads and uh, online videos for Hillary Clinton. And why not? After Hillary's husband, Bill Clinton, was elected president in 1992, he asked Maya Angelou to write and deliver an inaugural poem, which she read live in person at his inauguration in January 1993. And by the way, she won a Grammy Award for Best Spoken Album for the audio version of this poem. I think that is pretty cool. She is one of the most highly quoted authors and celebrities, probably because, as it has been said, Dr. Angela's words and actions continue to stir our souls and energize our bodies. You know, there's a lot to learn from Maya Angelou, especially in living a life fully, despite great odds, and to be your authentic self, which made her quite inspiring, especially to me. President Barack Obama issued a statement the day she passed, calling her a brilliant writer, a fierce friend, and a truly phenomenal woman. And he went on to write that Maya Angelou had the ability to remind us that we all are God's children, that we all have something to offer. And I hope you guys remember that, um, you know, as you struggle on a day-to-day -day basis, um, that, you know, we are we are all 
together in this. We are all one. We all come from the Almighty God, and we have the power to to change our lives and to live a better life. And that's again, that's what this show is about. The last quote I want to share with you, uh, one of the many that inspire and stirs the soul, I found in an unlikely place. I think. I mean, to me and. Entrepreneur Magazine Online, in an article entitled 10 Quotes on Persistence to Help You Keep Going, compiled by Adam Turin, uh, it uses her famous quote, you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter these defeats so that you can know who you are, what you can rise from, how you can still come out of it. Thank you, Maya. Persistence, as you know, is the ability to get back up and keep going after falling down. And we thank you, Maya, for reminding us of that. And that's just the tip of the iceberg on Maya Angelou and what we can learn from her in trying to have a better day and pushing on to live a better life. I'm Debbie Givens, host and producer of A Better Day, A Better Life, wishing you a better day. Maya, take us out on this note on how you'd like to be remembered. 